Ladies and gentlemen, we are one hour away for the whole global launch of Modern Warfare 3. So that includes single player campaign, multiplayer, and of course, zombies. And one thing that you may be wondering, or one thing that you should know about Modern Warfare 3 is there are a lot of settings, like a ton of settings, the most settings we've ever seen in a Call of Duty game. And some of these settings that I'm going to show you today are actually going to completely change the way that you play Modern Warfare 3. Not only are they going to make you better, they are simply going to make the game look and feel better because we're going to go over everything from controls to graphics to audio. It is going to improve your game substantially and you are going to want to follow a lot of these settings that I'm going to show you today. So there's a lot to go through here. So without further ado, if you enjoy and this helps you out, it's always appreciated if you hit that like button. But these are the best settings for Modern Warfare 3. So first off, Call of Duty Headquarters is very confusing. So I'm going to show you actually how to get to the settings. When you press start, you're going to want to go all the way to the right, and then you can go into your settings. I am going to start off with my controller settings because I don't play on mouse and keyboard. I don't want to give you any sort of advice or input as to what your sensitivity should be on that or anything. Just because I've always played on controller, I play on PC but I do use controller. So as you can see, that is my input device. As far as the button layout that I use, I have always used tactical. And the reasoning behind that is it puts all of your movement abilities onto your sticks and then all of your buttons control everything else. And I like that. I've always liked that. I like the movement just to be in two fingers and then everything else is everything else. Now, after this bumper ping, you're going to want to be off flip. The only reason you might want to use this is if you don't have hair triggers on your controller. Um, which it does make it a little bit faster to have your shoot and aim buttons be on L1 and R1 compared to L2 and R2. Um, but I don't like it. So even if I didn't have a hair trigger controller, I still wouldn't use it. My stick layout is default and then controller vibration. You're going to want to have off just because vibration does mess with your aim a little bit. Your trigger effects. This is specifically talking about PS5 controllers, how it makes it harder to pull your triggers. You don't want that on it makes it more difficult to aim and then dead zones are very important so i currently have everything set to zero here however the way that you're going to want to do this is going to be different for every single controller so don't use my numbers but i can show you how to choose what numbers to use so when you turn on test stick dead zone you're going to want to move your sticks around a little bit and then it's going to show you some numbers so on the left stick it shows a number one and a number two on my right stick it shows a number zero and a number two what I'm going to want to do is turn my testing off, go over here, and you're going to want to choose one number above what the highest number it showed you. So mine was two and two. So I'm going to go three and three. And then when I go to test my stick dead zones, you're going to see that even when I move my sticks around, it always comes back to zero. That is what you want. And then as far as your left trigger and right trigger, you're going to want both of those at zero. So as soon as you press that button, it's going to work immediately. Now, aiming, this is probably the most important thing we're going to look at as far as your sensitivity. Sensitivity is a sticky one. I personally like a lower sensitivity, so I use a six, but it does go all the way up to 20. So basically the sensitivity I use is very, very low. Just the way I like to play, I don't like missing shots, so I play on a lower sensitivity. That is essentially the way I look at it. But if you want to figure out something that works for you, basically you turn up your sensitivity to a level that you think is about right, and every two games, turn it up one or down one based off of how you feel you're doing. And once you feel like you're really honed in on your aim, that is the sensitivity you're going to want to stick at. Now, as far as my ADS multiplier, I choose a 0.9. This just makes it so your aim's a little bit tighter when you're aimed down sights. Your vertical axis aim, I just have all of these on standard. Tactical stance, I want to feel the same as my ADS, so I put this one to 0.9 as well. Your aim response curve type, this one you're going to want to choose dynamic. If you're a good player, this is probably already what you're using. Just trust me, give it a shot. You'll see what I mean by this one. Um, linear is a solid choice as well, but dynamic is where it's at. Your focus, you're going to want just normal there. Your ADS sensitivity transition timing, I put this one on instant. What this means is when you aim down sight, it immediately puts that modifier on your aim. This is the one that you probably want if you are putting a modifier on your ADS sensitivity. Now, as far as custom sensitivity per zoom, basically the way that I do this is when I'm using a low zoom weapon, I want my aim to be tighter because when you're using a higher zoom weapon, your aim already moves slower. So you're going to see on high zoom weapons, I actually make my ADS aim speed a little bit faster than one. 
Whereas when I'm on low, I keep it much lower. So these are the numbers that I use. You don't have to use the same thing, but I just like it to move a little bit faster on high zoom. And I've even considered putting these up to 1.05 as well. The next thing is asking if you want aim assist on, you definitely do. And the one that you're going to want to use here, in my opinion, is black ops. And the reason for that is when you're moving around with your left stick, the black ops aim is going to implement rotational aim assist and it's going to lock onto targets much faster. This is what you should be using as long as you're using a controller. Trust me, it's going to make a big difference. It might feel a little bit weird at first, but in the long run, your aim is going to be that much better because essentially your aim assist is stronger. Third person, I'm not going to worry too much about motion sensor behavior. You don't want that whatsoever. That's aiming with controller by moving it. That's very difficult. I mean, you can try it, but you're not going to enjoy it. As far as gameplay goes, I play with automatic tack sprint. It's just going to speed up your game, make it so you're moving faster whenever you can. I recommend giving that a shot. Again, might take a little bit to get used to, but I think you'll like it. Because of this, your tactical sprint behavior doesn't matter. This one is interesting, grounded mantle. This one I turn off just because if you turn this on, if you run up to a ledge, it's going to automatically mantle for you. And I do not like that when it happens at an inopportune time, it's super annoying. So that's why I have it off automatic airborne mantle. I have on partial the next big one. And this one they just added into the game with the day one update is the slide and dive behavior. So I have this on slide only. What this means is that I cannot dive, but it is going to be a lot easier to slide cancel. And the reasoning for that is because my stick button, that is what I use to crouch, is now just dedicated to this. So I'm not going to accidentally dive when I'm trying to slide cancel. I recommend you give this one a shot. Plunging underwater, I have on trigger. Parachute, I have it on auto deploy only out of a plane. Sprinting door bash, sure, why not? Ledge climb behavior on mantle only. Slide cancel sprint. This is basically enabling slide cancel. You're going to want that on. Now, everything else here, I basically have on the default settings. However, the one that you're going to probably want to look at is your interact and reload behavior. I have it on tap to reload. Everything else will prioritize things like picking up things in war zone or armor or things like that. But if I just tap it, it is going to reload and that is what it is going to do. But that is pretty much it for the control section. Now let's look pretty and look at the graphics. So going into the graphics here, the first thing you need to know is the first settings here in display. This one is going to be completely dependent on your setup. I have a 4090. It's one of the best graphics cards you can buy. And because of that, I'm going to have a lot of my graphic settings on the highest possible because I can get a really good amount of frames on those settings. So as far as this first part with your display settings, it's just going to be completely dependent on what you have. Same goes with your brightness. It's going to depend on what your monitor is and everything like that. So there's really no point into going into many of these details. The one thing that you may want to adjust is I would probably put eco mode on custom because if you put it on low consumption or efficiency, what that's going to do is turn down some of your other settings, which you probably don't want. But then V-Sync, you're going to want off. And then as far as your frame rate, I just throw mine on unlimited because I don't really need to worry about it. But as far as this goes, just mess with your settings. If you're getting not enough frames, kind of screw with some of these things and it'll figure itself out for you. Now, as far as quality goes, my graphics presets are on custom. Again, I'm going to have very high settings here. Uh, the one that I do like to use is the Fidelity FX Cast. I just find that it works a little bit better. And this is actually one that you're going to have to turn up once you adjust it in your settings if you have a good graphics card. My texture resolution I have on high because I like things to look textury. This next one I don't find makes a very big difference, so I just have it on normal. Depth of field I like off just because I find when it blurs the things around your weapon, it actually makes it more difficult to see someone coming at you from the side, which I don't like. Detail quality and everything like this I'm going to have on high. Bullet impacts I actually like to have on because you can kind of see the direction that people are shooting. So if you see bullet impacts, you know someone has shot in that direction. It can really help out, especially if you're playing something like Search and Destroy. Shader quality I have on high and on-demand texture streaming I have on. Now, another thing that doesn't make a lot of difference, I have my shadow quality on high. I find it makes it look a little bit more cinematic, but again, this isn't something you have to have on ultra. Screen space shadows, I find that the weapons look better when this is on low, just because it puts more light onto your weapon. But if you find it distracting, put it on high. The ambient occlusion, I only have on static objects. Reflections, I have on high, again, because I feel like they look cool. But again, another one that I find doesn't make a big difference, I put this one on low. Now, as far as environment goes, if you're having trouble on especially ground war maps and things like that, these are the ones that you're going to want to turn down. They are going to help out a lot with the amount of frames that you are getting. Uh, but again, I have them all on high. Now, 
The important one out of the graphics is your view. So my field of view, I use 110. I find 120 is just a little bit too much, but if you want to crank it up all that way, uh, go for it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I think you're going to want it at least at 100 and you're going to want affected because that's going to make a difference when you're actually aiming down sights. Trust me on that one. Your weapon field of view on wide. This one is just because I think it makes the weapons look better. Um, third person field of view I have on 90, but I don't play third person and vehicle field of view have on wide one. I find it easier to drive vehicles and two, you're going to be able to see more when you're in vehicles. The things you're going to want to be off, you're going to want world motion blur definitely off it blurs everything it looks horrible weapon motion blur same thing i don't even know why they have these they are very frustrating annoying they just don't look good film grain i turn completely off or it starts to look blurry in certain parts and the first person camera movement i have on least 50 percent. this is going to cause the camera to shake if you turn this up in game and it's actually going to ruin your gameplay something you're definitely going to want to have low i also have the same thing as third person, but I don't play third person. Spectator cam, you can either choose game perspective or helmet cam. I prefer game perspective, but that's up to you. And if flashbangs hurt your eyes, you can invert flashbangs so it gets dark instead of light. So then we get into audio. I have mine on home theater, but I don't find that it makes much big of a difference if you were gonna wanna choose headphones or home theater or anything like that. Um, this is what device you're using to hear your volume out of. Um, as far as your speaker audio, I have it on stereo. Now you're going to notice that my master volume is way down. I find this game incredibly loud, so I keep mine at 20, but the things you're going to want to turn down, I would turn down the gameplay music volume just because it is going to make it so that you can't hear anything else over it. I do like a little bit of music, just not too much. And same goes with the cinematic music volume. This as well, especially if you're playing search and destroy when that round cut timer starts counting down, it gets really loud and you can't hear any footsteps. You don't want that. Dialogue volume, effects volume, you're going to want all the way up. Those ones are going to help you in game. And then voice chat, I have turned down just because some people's mics are very loud or they eat in them or they listen to music and it's very annoying. Now I have voice chat on and if you don't want to hear people, you can turn that off. Same goes with proximity chat. I have my microphone on push to talk and you can just put it to whatever button you'd prefer. Subtitles, I would recommend keeping on just mainly because sometimes things pop up in game that you might not hear, but if you can read them and you can see them pop up, you know what the characters are saying. As far as mono audio goes, this one, if you turn it on, you're not going to be able to hear where footsteps are or where they're coming from. Just do not turn it on. And then we get into interface. This one's pretty straightforward as well. Subtitles, I just have on default. Color customization. This, if your monitor is messed up and colors aren't looking right, you can mess with that. You are going to want to make sure that your mini map is on square because you get a larger mini map. That's important. And I need mini map rotation on. If I don't have it on, it just completely messes up with where I am and where enemies are on the map. You can turn your compass off, but sometimes it is helpful. So keep that on and everything else you just want to keep exactly the way that it is. One other thing that you might want on is in telemetry. You might want your FPS, packet loss, and server latency on, which are the first three. If you're having problems in game, if you're dropping frames and you don't know whether it's your internet or the game, or whether you have a setting wrong in your graphics, if you turn these on, it'll tell you kind of what's going wrong and where, and you can make adjustments from there. So now you are good. You're good to hop in and play. These should be the best settings for you. The ones that'll change up a bit are those graphic settings and audio settings based off of what you are actually using to play, watch, listen, or do the game with. And otherwise, the gameplay settings, those are the ones you're really going to want to pay attention to. So hopefully this is able to help you out. Hopefully this makes your game a little bit better. If it did, I would love it if you could hit that like button, subscribe to stay up to date on everything Call of Duty. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace. We are